forest. I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with the term forest gardening or food forests, but a quick way of maybe describing a forest garden is a multi-purpose, multifunctional orchard. Um, but unlike a conventional orchard that maybe focuses on just one or two um, varieties of fruit or nut crops, a forest garden is a mixture of high-yielding shrubs and trees and herbs that have a beneficial use to either the people that have planted this forest garden or the animals that are around it. So a forest garden isn't just a place to grow fruit, it's a place to grow everything that we need. Forest gardens are a mimic of naturally occurring forests. A forest in its own right can look after itself, can take care of its own fertility needs, and has um, very intricate relationships with all the other plants and animals and microbes that share the ecosystem of a forest. And the concept is if we can take that model um, and copy that natural architectural pattern of a forest and replace some of the species with higher yielding trees and shrubs such as fruit trees and um, herbs then we can have quite a sustainable system that should have very little to no maintenance requirements especially after the first few years and be a very abundant food system. In 2017 we decided to plant two forest garden tree rows and that's what we've decided to call them. These are linear orchards or linear forest gardens, more akin to hedgerows really. Uh, the typical forest garden is mimicked or inspired by the architecture of a natural forest and we have an area of forest garden which we planted in the early days of Tappanoth Farm which is more sprawling and, and over a larger piece of land. But here in the market garden, this is our business and we wanted to experiment with planting a forest garden which has all the benefits of that forest garden design but putting in a straight row. And the reason for that is that we were thinking about harvesting. One of the critiques of forest gardening is that it's too difficult to harvest from because you have this naturally chaotic design that makes it very hard for um, machinery to go in and harvest on a large scale if you were planning on using a forest garden to either farm with or, or feed a large community. And of course on a small scale that doesn't matter, it's people scaled and that's lovely. Here at Tappano Farm we're sort of bridging a gap between back gardening and farming. Any food system that we want to design here in the market garden and on the rest of the farm um, has got to be ecologically sound and economically viable and that's one of the definitions of a permaculture farm and so that's why we have decided to go with putting these um, forest gardens here in the market garden in these rows it means that we can access the fruit very easily for picking um, we're working with the design and the aspect of the current market garden we're south facing um, so we've planted fruiting crops such as a raspberry along the south side and fruiting shrubs such as blackcurrant along the north side. The north side is the shadier side so we needed to put a crop there that responds and can manage with shade. We often talk about the seven layers of a forest garden and in my opinion you don't have to have all seven layers to class it as a forest garden. Talking about seven layers makes you see just how much um, space can be available for different fruiting trees and shrubs. There are different species of trees which make use of different niches. The seven layers is just a way of being able to see that there is much scope for fitting in a, a large amount of um, beneficial trees and shrubs in a small area. And so if we're thinking about the seven layers, we've got the upper canopy, we've got the canopy, we've got the shrub layer, we've got the herbaceous layer, we've got the ground cover layer, we've got a climbing, and we've got a root layer. And here in our forest garden tree rows, we haven't got the full seven. We've got canopy species such as apples and plums. And we've got the shrub layer consisting here of um, autumn olive and blackcurrant and raspberry. Our herbaceous is made up of comfrey and herbs such as fennel and lovage. And our ground cover is a very healthy swathe of mint. We don't have a climbing layer in these uh, tree rows 
And our root layer is made up of a, what we find a lot easier in our climate to think of as a mycelium layer, or a fungi layer. During a mushroom cultivation course that we ran here last October, and we inoculated the wood chip mulch that we have on the forest floor of these tree rows with edible species of mushrooms. A very busy and full and well-designed area. So like I said, these tree rows were first planted in 2017 and we started by putting in the canopy species. Here we have an apple tree on dwarf rooting stock. Uh, this, is, this variety is Discovery, which does very well in our climate here in northeast Scotland. We decided to put the canopy species in first and we were focusing on apples and plums. Like I said before, we have an area of forest garden uh, that we've kind of used as a test site where we've planted all sorts of fruiting trees and shrubs like pears and plums and apples and quince and a whole bunch of stuff just to see what uh, works well with our climate. And the plums and apples, of course, came out on top. In these tree rows, we decided to go apple, plum, apple, plum, apple, plum, and those trees are spaced roughly one, two, three, four, five, six meters. And then in between each of our canopy species, our fruit trees, we've got a nitrogen fixing shrub. And this acts as a nurse species or a nurse crop for the high yielding fruit trees. And in this case, we're using autumn olive, Aliagnus umbellata, um, we don't have a huge range of nitrogen fixing shrubs that we can use here in Scotland um, But this is one that grows very well as you can see um, this shrub is only um, two years old and it's already taller than me and Twice as wide a lot of you out there already know autumn olive um, As I said it fixes atmospheric nitrogen it produces an edible berry and it's very tolerant of, of uh, cold winds and makes a great windbreak so the autumn olive is planted between each fruit tree and then between the autumn olives and the fruit trees we have our herbaceous layer which is comfrey again comfrey fantastic herb we have it planted throughout the garden this is Russian comfrey or bocking 14 so it's sterile it doesn't set seed um, which means you can control it a lot more throughout your gardens and um, we plant this next to all the fruit trees, especially here in the tree rows. Um, a dynamic accumulator, comfrey has very large tap roots, so it can access minerals and nutrients that maybe the tree roots can't. So when the comfrey dies back in autumn, all those nutrients are made accessible to the trees. But we can accelerate that by chopping and dropping the comfrey um, throughout the growing season. Comfrey can be cut back up to four times every year um, and given as a mulch around the base of the trees. Another shrub layer aspect to our forest garden tree rows here is blackcurrant. Um, so classic uh, soft fruit variety for our climate. And we've got at least 30 meters of it here. All of our tree rows are 30 meters long here in the market garden by about three meters wide. Um, so like I said, the, the blackcurrant here growing on the shadier side of the tree rows. And on the sunnier side, the south facing side, we've got 30 meters of raspberries. And these are an autumn fruiting variety. This is autumn bliss. And then, as I mentioned, we have our ground cover layer and this is uh, mint. Of course, this kind of works its way into the herbaceous layer as well. Um, it also works its way into your garden if it, you're not careful. I might not plant these again if I redesigned or, or planted similar systems, but it does a very good job at smothering out all the potential weeds and grasses that could be coming in. And we do use mint a lot. Um, certainly a lot of mojitos being drunk in the summer. Um, we use the mint um, as a bedding in our hen houses. And we've also got different herbs dotted around the tree rows. This is fennel, we've got lovage, um, marigolds, and um, nasturtium. We planted these tree rows in 2017. The first thing we did after identifying where we wanted the rows was to mulch the grass. So we put down layers of cardboard and any uh, sort of organic material that we could find to blanket out the grass. And then we covered it all in a very thick layer of wood chip. And we did this because we know that the wood chip is a food source of fungi and we wanted to encourage a fungal dominant soil around the trees that are growing here um, because perennial trees and shrubs on the whole mostly respond well to a fungal dominant soil or at least a large um, population of fungi in the soil. And then we planted through that wood chip uh, putting in our canopy species with our shrubs in between the trees and to the north and the south of the trees 
all spaced so we can still access the fruit trees uh, for harvesting. We prune the fruit trees to keep them at a manageable size so that we can harvest. We were conscious that um, because of the fact that we've put these fruit tree rows um, east to west down a south facing slope we didn't want to um, plant the fruit trees too close together because we didn't want to cast shade on the vegetable beds. Market garden being our main business we didn't want to cast shade on these so we have set the trees the, the large fruiting trees quite far apart but it is a fantastic place to come and harvest from it really does feel a lot more like going foraging uh, in a hedgerow reaching past um, the shrub fruiting shrub layers reaching up high to get your your plums or apples down off of the trees it really is one of our favorite parts of the market garden to be in thanks for watching everyone if you want to watch more then please do head over to our youtube channel where you'll find full-length vlogs and other tap shorts.